Bro, is that a real bird or that's that's you it's and your sounds? <laughs> this, this is my yard. <laughs> Jeez, bro, life is good, man. You've got the land. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Time for the land. We got the land, bro. One day at a time, Masejo. One day at a time. Take it back. <laughs> What's up, man? Like last time we saw you was like what two years ago? Yeah, yeah, two years ago. My hair was much shorter. Yeah, and 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 so much has happened in your life. I remember you posted the other day. I'm like, it's so crazy how your life can change in 12 months. Um, and I can just imagine how it's been. Like two years later, you dropped an amazing yeah. album. The reception was crazy ah. with that album. Were you surprised? I was. I feel like you only know that you love your music. You're kind of surprised other people take something from it as well, you know? Mm. So I was just happy. What surprised you the most from people's reviews and, and how they, recept, uh, they, they received the album? Um, I think knowing the lyrics to like the non-singles always gets me. Because when you promote and market something, you expect people to know about it. But yeah. there's like smaller songs in the interludes on the album, like Silk, that got a lot of attention. Um, I, ha I Had a Vision was not a single, but it's a very loved song as well. And that bird is so loud, but uh, yeah. but yeah, I'm just surprised people know songs other than the three singles we came out with. And I feel like um, it makes me happy because like, you know, mm -hmm. South African, just African in general, they, they take attention to the whole body of work, mm -hmm. whereas the Americas are very single based. So I'm always appreciative and like, oh yeah, you know the interlude, you know the last song, you know the, you know, I like things like that. How did you go about choosing the people that you featured on the song or the people that you collaborated with? Because I, I think for people listening, you know, I'm just like, I wouldn't put these two people together, but somehow you made a match of music. Honestly, I first try to go to my friends because I don't like going through a long pathway to get something done. And I'm a fan of a lot of artists. so. I think a lot of it was um, the easiest process. Like Tiffany Goucher, I talk to her all the time. Like, and I think she has a beautiful voice, and like her her writing is amazing. So, yeah, it was a very simple process with that one. And um, with the Ari Lennox's voice on uh, Silk, her and I were just working on a lot of music together, and we have a lot of songs that are, aren't finished. And I love the way that that kind of was kind of uh, sounding on the music. So. Just any natural process, because I, I hate going through many channels to get something done. I like a person that would actually pull up to the show, someone that I could call after the song. Like, I don't like it to be business. I want it to be actually, you know, a part of the world that I'm building. So yeah. I'm, I'm very particular about who I allow in my music. Yeah. And, and someone who I, I can hear when you guys make music, even when I check out some of the YouTube videos, has to be FKJ. Hey. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. I think I think Tado is one song when you play and when we play 10 years from now, we're like, yo, that boy really came through heavy. But something I noticed is that even on, on, on iTunes or Apple Music, the extended version was pulled down. Can we expect more music between you and FKJ, maybe a collaborative effort? Sure, I'd love to. Um, I feel like we just have to be in the same place again. It's so rare because he's in the Philippines and I'm everywhere. So the moment we can get in the same room, we're going to make music very fast. Um, but yeah, I was speaking to him, I think maybe a week ago, just about the success of the, the album, the record, and kind of recapping that day. But um, I don't know, he's just a pure spirit. You know, he's just a genuinely a great musician and loves art. And the music video he just dropped was hand painted. Like he's very meticulous and particular. I, I, I yeah, if he's in the same place as me, we're making music. Yeah. Uh, taking it away from music right now, we on lockdown, mm. it's COVID-19, which means you can't tour. There's certain things you can't do at the moment. What, what were yeah. some of the things you had planned out for 2020 that has kind of been pulled back a little bit because of the COVID-19? I mean, the main thing was Coachella. Yeah, that, yeah. that definitely hurt a lot. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I, I think it's great that all of us are sharing the same experience when it comes to artists. So, you know, next year we'll be making that up. But... Yeah, everything else wasn't even fully, uh, what do you call it, solidified yet. Certain shows were still getting put together, so we didn't have any announcements yet. But um, yeah, we were working on so many things. Like, I love to tour everywhere when I, when I tour. I don't like to come back to this house unless I have to. Mm. Has your sound 
changed uh, in any way since since the lockdown was initiated? I don't know if you were in a, a jazz fusion zone and now you're in a neo soul zone. Like, have you been making any music? And if so, what? How would you describe the sound? Well, honestly, I, I think my my writing has um, elevated because I feel like I want to make songs more and more conversational. Yeah. Um. And kind of getting straight to what do I want people to take away from it versus I used to be making sure that the feel was always right, but now I'm making sure both lyrics and feel are right. Um, I'm experimenting with different types of drums because I feel like uh, if you hear a certain drum, you expect certain music to follow, but I've been fusing those things together a lot and um, just getting better at instruments. Like I have a lot of instruments here and I've just been learning how to play them better. Mm. Um, and I'm blessed to have my studio at my house, so I'm always in there every day, just making something because it's not work to me. It's just, it's just kind of what I do. Yeah. Talking about instruments, we know you're great to the sax, you're great with the keys, and you just mentioned you got a whole lot. Wh which one, which one um, has, has become one of your favorites? The top two right now are trumpet and guitar. So I apologize for the amount of trumpet and guitar you're going to hear on all the music. Yeah. <laughs> going to be a lot. But I love those two a lot, particularly right now. Let's talk about King's Runs. It was an amazing way to wrap up the year. Um, it, was, it was also a statement maker. I remember heard it on the show. I was like, okay, this is new. Uh, it's, yeah. it's not like one of those Marcel sounds that you hear. You're like, oh, immediately that's Marcel because yeah. we're just used to the melodies. We're just used to you being very soft. But you, you came through right there. Like there was a totally different energy. Take us through that, 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 that moment. Was it because of the gold certification of Taido? Uh, was <laughs> What, what was happening? Honestly, um, I'm a big fan of a lot of, uh, I was talking about Kendrick Lamar and Drake, right? Mm. Where I love the braggadocious side of music coupled with another record, right? So Kings Ran and Veg Out go hand in hand. Mm. Where Kings Ran is just like talking about things that I would never really talk about in music. You know, I feel like I wanted to just share a few stories and kind of do a little flexing, just have some fun with it. And then Veg Out was more so of, getting into the story and getting to the record that, you know, it has the more chorus feel to it. So I don't know. King's Rant was just something that made me feel very like, that's how I feel every time I'm in Africa. Like I feel very just like chest out and um, just wanted to talk about everything that's gone right. And the trumpets made me feel very like, you know, very royal. So I don't know. I just love the, the feeling of it and just being able to just kind of get my words off one time. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, hi, how do you feel about uh, French Montana saying that he can go toe to toe with K Dot? I saw that this morning. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so, which side yes. of the are you on? <laughs> I'm on Kendrick's side. What? I mean, I don't even know what hits mean. It's about impact. Kendrick has impacted this world way more than the French person. I don't know his last name. French person? <laughs> I'm loving I know the Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> he spent Kendrick Lamar. Okay. Bro. Where are you? First of all, where are you? Where I'm you? in my backyard. <laughs> I'm in uh, Los backyard. Angeles. Los Angeles. Oh, okay. okay. You're president. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah? Yeah, soon I'll have a, a property in uh, South Africa, but I need to wait for this to open outside. Woo, woo, woo! But, um, come on, take it back. But no, um... Wait, what was the question? I keep losing track. Okay, you know what? S since you're there, let's actually talk about that. You tweeted last year. I'll never forget this tweet. I was inspired. You're saying you're, you're kickstarting a brand new year as a multi-millionaire. I was like, okay, cool. The boy is on. Um, what, what would you say has, like, money changes people, so they say? Mm -hmm. um, and the last time when we had you on the show, you said you honestly have no idea how much you have in your bank account. All you know is when you swipe, you point it at some dude, it needs to work. It needs to go through, you know? What would you say has changed with now having money? You know what I mean? Has it, has it made it easy for you to do certain things? Access. You know, do you have more accountants? I don't know. What has changed? I think I talk about it less the more well off I get. Um, I've learned that from the Warren Buffetts and, like, all the people like that. But I think money just kind of gives you – more options to like, you know, travel more, stay places longer, um, get the instruments that I want. But I think money will definitely show you who you are. And I'm kind of just a big kid. Like I have a lot of Nerf guns and games. And yeah. I feel like it just kind of reveals what would you sp spend money on? I feel like I'm, I'm big on legacy. Like I want to actually own things, um, you know, anytime I can. And then something that lasts 
until the, the year afterwards. Like I want to buy a museum and put things in that. And you know what I'm saying? So I feel like I'm, I'm trying to use my money to make it do something else in the future. Like I'm done with the name brands and the cars and the whatever else you can buy with money. I, I want to make something other people can, can see. That is dope. Have, have you bought that one thing you've always been dreaming about since, since you were a kid? I just wanted a grand piano. Like that's all I wanted really. So I got that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Bro, yeah. I, I've had this chain forever. So like, I'm not really big on anything else. Yeah. Let's talk about the new single, bro. Veg out, wasting time. Why name it that? Yeah. Um, well, the term veg out, it's, it's been mentioned in a lot of different things. Um, even with Michael Jackson, your vegetable and all that. Sometimes you want to just turn your brain off and just kind of let the whatever's happening outside kind of come in. You know, I feel like we think, we overthink so many things. Mm. And in the particular narrative of dating, I feel like we think too much on let's make sure that I pay for the meal and let's make sure that we go to a fancy restaurant. It's like, do you actually get to know someone when you're hanging out with them? Mm. And I feel like I wanted to put more attention on actually being someone's friend. Actually, can I hang out? Can I kick it and listen to music with you? So I feel like that was the narrative I was talking about on that song. And then the rest is just great instrumentation. Yeah. And how, how is your dating life now that you are who you are? Has anything changed? I, I'm just talking. That's about it. Because, I mean, everybody? I think I need to... Huh? You talking to everybody? Oh, my gosh. No, I'm talking <laughs> to... Talking to God. <laughs> talking to God. <laughs> Talking to God, asking him what I should do. Uh, yo, man, in South Africa, polygamy is a thing. Is it a thing? In don't your world? do it. Please it's, don't do it. It's a thing here in South Africa, myself. So if you want to get yourself a young out of east, a young out of east, but you I know, mean, if, so you, if you come through, if, this so you, thing. So you, you know, so you know when you're on tour in South Africa, you got a South African wife. You know when you're in America, you got an American wife. Ah. Uh, if I was a South African hey, man, that visa now. <laughs> We're living in the same house. We go. <laughs> oh my God. I'll make a song about the conversation, but I don't think it's for me. Okay. <laughs> okay. But it's very interesting. You're one woman man. But I, I think what I wanted to also know from you is like, so we see these Instagram live battles happening. And uh, some of them yeah. are very successful. And then your man did what he did the other day. But if you had to go ahead and hit anyone right now, Instagram live battle, who would it be and why? Um, man, who would I go with an Instagram battle live on? Maybe, because that'd have to be someone I could like win against. No, no anyone. someone that you see as like, yo, I respect this person's music. I love what he does. Like this, this is my equal to some extent. Who do I like like that? <laughs> um, either Anderson Pack or oh, that's big. <sighs> yeah, that's big, bro. Oh, who... That'd be fun. That'd be fun. But he's no, ah, he's older than me, so he's had more time to write pe songs for people. I don't know. I would do Anderson Pack, but that'd be a fun one. And um, man, who else can I think of that actually? I guess FKJ. I guess we'll just go back and forth yeah. and who we produce for. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll do those two. That is crazy. Uh, any collaboration to be on the lookout for this year, or collabs that are already in the back? Do you guys know Alex Isley? I don't know. No. She is the daughter of the Isley brothers. Oh. She's um. She's very, very, very good. And I made her some songs. So I, those should be coming out soon, but like she vocalist. Amazing. Okay. Okay. Nah, yeah, I don't know. I'm like, is she a vocalist? She she sings. She's a vocalist. Trust me. Look up whatever she has now. You'll love it. It feels great. Yeah. Gotcha. Is there anything you wanna alert your South African fans? I know you're very vocal on your love for South Africans, uh, on your on your Twitter especially. And the ladies are always the quick the first to respond. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I, like, I always think of, I, I've been making a playlist that I need to share with you guys called Utanda, and it's just all of the songs that um, remind me of South Africa when I'm away. So I, I think I'll share that pretty soon since I can't physically be there. Yeah. And why, and why Masego and not Masego? I say Masego, but I mean, I feel like America hasn't caught up yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay.
That's dope, bro. So when you buy your house, are you buying it in Cape Town? Are you buying it in Joburg? Are you buying it in Durban? Who's going to show me around? I need to make sure I get the, the best bang for my buck. Your playlist is called Utando, which is Zulu. So KZN. KZN. Overlooking the beach, bro. Zulu girl, I guess. Yes. Oh, man. She said hey. Oh, Home of polygamy, I guess. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I think, I think, I think Durban. Durban is dope because it's summer all year round. So if you feel like you need summer, you just touch down in Durban, uh, Cape Town, bro. It'll be an amazing moment. You're getting the land back. Biden camps bay. You know, like, make them angry. Make all the white people like. <laughs> and then who is he? Joburg, I think you need a break from Joburg, personally <laughs> speaking. It's, it's a lot. It's noisy. Just maybe go somewhere. No, man. Joburg, you can buy in Sandhurst. Uh-huh. You can buy in, uh, you know, uh, Houghton. Houghton's also nice. Joburg is LA. Yeah. It's New York. Yeah, true. So, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay, so I need to research Durban more then. Oh, bro, you're going to love Durban. Durban is, Durban, they say it's like California. In terms uh, of what? The babes? The beach, the babes, um, the moon. The babes. There you have it. Do what you want. Whatever. Why you want him to come to Joburg? I ain't say none. I'm just saying people's men are gonna fight. Yeah, that's what's up, bro. Unless you wanna give us an MTV Cribs vibe. I, I just wanna see your sneaker collection, bro. I mean, I, I feel like I've been very there for like. All I have is instruments on the wall right now. The story around those guitars, because you're just not gonna have them hanging there for no reason. I'm sure there's something special. Oh. Oh no, they they just kind of stay out the way over there. But I I do have uh, a lot of artwork. I think this one is from where is this one from? Is this from Cape Town? Can you see her? Oh yeah, yeah. that's a. Dream. And then we have the Golden Woman right here. Oh. So this what this is what keeps me inspired when I create. And I have instruments all over the place. So wow. MTV Cribs tour. This is from uh, Uganda. This is from Rwanda. This is from like Nairobi. Oh, and then wait a minute. We have Africa. <laughs> but not enough specifically. <laughs> Represent. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you so much for your time. We really do appreciate it. We really do, bro.